Hi, I'm Robert Whitworth. Um, thank you for joining us for ASCOM's Ask the Experts. Um, today I have with me uh, Lee from ASO. Lee, you want to introduce yourself and a little, bit about, a little bit about you and your background? Yeah, certainly. Well, thank you for having me join today. Lee Clark, I'm the CEO of ASO Data Services. We focus on connecting, collecting, and combining data so it's easy for hospitals to interpret how they're running and how to enhance their care. Awesome. Well, Lee, let's just jump into our first question today. So where today, when you, when you think about the industry as a whole, in particular healthcare and hospitals, where are hospitals at in their adoption curve when it comes to meaningful uh, clinical analytics? So hospitals are on a wide range. There's a wide spectrum. It ranges from hospitals that know they have data, but don't know how to con collect it or what to do with it if they can to research institutions that are, that are investing millions of dollars in advanced research, whether it be AI or other predictive type models. Um, so it's a very wide range that we see. Okay. Um, can you give us some, some examples of, of just some specifics of where you've seen different people in those adoption curves? Yes. So we see smaller hospitals that have an antiquated nurse call system that has information that is very useful, but they don't know how to connect to that system and extract that data. Uh, furthermore, they don't know how to combine it with other data sets. And then you go to some of the more advanced uh, educational and research institutions, and they have entire teams, entire organizations that are focused on pulling data not only from their hospital, but from other outside, uh, like population health statistics and combining those. Okay. What is it that's driving the, this recent adoption? And I mean, I've seen in my own practice this heightened interest in clinical analytics. Well, certainly in the last uh, several years, we've seen an increase because one, hospitals are trying to retain their staff while they're also trying to improve care. And the use of analytics allows these hospitals to positively measure the, the excellent care that their clinicians are delivering and be able to share that um, with, with their leadership teams, um, which helps show the effect of, of how they can retain, of the, of the things they're doing to retain their staff. Can you give some examples of how you see people using data successfully to drive better staff retention? Certainly. So clinicians, as we're all aware, are most focused on delivering excellent patient care. Mm -hmm. but they don't always get recognized for the work they're doing. And with a good analytics platform, you can show, you, you can show that. Uh, you can show it across uh, the individuals and the shifts and the departments. Um, so it's very important to recognize or award the excellent work that clinicians are doing. Okay. It can be something as simple as response time, um, but it also helps identify the outliers. So, so if you are having a problem with retention, you at least have a baseline to help demonstrate where you may need additional resources. So Lee, what actions would you say are the most important for chief nursing officers in particular, but even service line directors and, and potentially even unit managers when it comes to tracking, analyzing, and refining um, what comes down to clinical analytics? The most successful organizations start with the basic measures, things that they understand. That can be response time, as I mentioned earlier. By focusing on, on the, the, the areas where they understand, they begin to learn what the data is telling them within the proper context. From there, you can move to how much time clinicians and, 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 and other staff are spending with patients, which can actually uh, reduce subsequent calls that they may get, which once again ties back to uh, retaining staff because you're actually lessening the load by spending more time with patients. Um, for example, there, there is a study that shows if you spend a certain amount of time with patients during the first call, you will reduce subsequent calls over the next several hours. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, so that becomes an actionable insight just with, with just one, one data point, really, then. Yes, absolutely. As you begin to uh, work across the continuum of, of data, you can begin to look at things like the number of alarms per, per patient. There are ways to begin to assess acuity. 
So instead of having to have someone go around once or twice a day with a clipboard to try to assess acuity, there are ways to take data from your, your telemetry system and other, and other factors and begin to do more of an ongoing acuity assessment, which can help you level the patient assignments across your staff, which once again ties back to improving patient care and retaining staff. That's amazing. Kind of becomes a big circle. It is absolutely a big circle. You know, our guests feeding feeding that success. I yes. love I love that. Yeah. So Lee, when it comes to impacting hospitals today, mm -hmm. especially in some of those things that you're just talking about, what if you if you were to say I'm going to pick one overall goal, so one overarching thing I'm going to focus on in the immediate future. What would you recommend there? One of the most impactful measures is staff response, and you have to combine staff response with measures like alarm levels because you want to see the cause and effect and a good analytic solution will let you see the cause and effect and the relationship of the data elements very easily. It's about making the data easy to understand within the context of your operations. That's fascinating. One of the things that I know since I've been part of ASCOM that I've gotten direct feedback from my own clinical team on is that when we put a system in place that can more effectively distribute alarms and information and alerts that a lot of times, especially from nursing leadership, there tends to be a temptation to, ooh, I have something new I can distribute. I need to distribute as much stuff as possible. How can data help uh, a clinical leader recognize not necessarily what can I distribute, but what should I distribute? Well, by having a large data set, you can begin to analyze uh, responses and reactions based on certain things. So um, one example might be a pulse ox. So if, if, you ha if you're measuring and distributing every pulse ox alarm that comes in when it comes in, then you, you may be sending out false indicators, which can actually inundate the, the staff with, with things, with, with more messages. And we actually see situations uh, like, like, like you describe, where a leader may say, I have this information, I need to get it out there, but it overwhelms the staff. That actually detracts from retention. So by having a large data set, you, you can begin to make informed decisions on what and when to, what alarms to send and when they should be sent. Can you share with us some both negative and positive examples of how somebody has used data to recognize something like that and then the impact that it's had? Uh, yes. I'll start with a positive effect. A hospital wanted to improve their satisfaction scores, which would increase their, their top line revenue. Um, and so they used data to establish a baseline. They tweaked their workflow they then measured the, the patient satisfaction scores over the next quarter, uh, over the next three months. And it was a fascinating response because not only did their patient satisfaction scores go up by 45%, oh, wow. which was quite substantial with a minor workflow tweak, but they had a 25% increase in the number of respondents. So what, not only were people saying better things, about the patient care they were delivering, more people were, sh were saying better things, which had, uh, which had an effect on their top line revenue, had most importantly, a positive effect on patient care. But that also then gets into the nurses felt better about what they were doing. It was actually demonstrating the, the excellent care they were delivering, which um, factors into retention, it factors into increased revenue, which, which provides them um, you know, additional funding for, for programs or resources that, that, they, that, they may, that they may desire. And at the end of the day, as you mentioned earlier, it becomes a cycle. That's phenomenal. It's, it's especially powerful, I think, when you can tie that to really specific data. You know, I made this change. We saw this direct improvement because that takes the whole, that takes that whole piece that nursing leadership is doing as far as managing people and environment and culture and ties it directly to measurable improvements. That's, yes. that's phenomenal. Yes, exactly. 
How about the negative side? How somebody, how's, how would, how would you say that has, have you seen that play out? Yeah, it's, even when we talk about the negative, there is a positive outcome, right? When you're using data, you're making, you're able to make informed decisions. So in a negative situation, you occasionally come across um, staff that just aren't quite performing up to the level that they need, that they need to for the, for the care of the patients. And so a properly structured analytics tool will allow you to see the organization, the department, the, sh the shift in the individuals. And so when you have an outlier, you may see a negative uh, data point but, that, but a properly designed analytics solution will allow you to drill into that negative data point and understand the cause behind it. So while you are researching something that, that may have been negative, it ends in a positive. Very good. So instead of just coming up with the policy that you throw at everybody to solve what turns out to be a really specific problem, you can actually go address just that problem. Yeah, it, it, very true, very true. I mean. You know, as leaders of organizations, we've all seen uh, situations in our careers where a policy was rolled out and it was intended to fix a very specific case but affected the whole team. And there may be resentment or something else that happens. Well, an analytics solution will allow, a good analytics solution will allow you to measure things before a policy is implemented and measure the effect after the implementation so that you know that you made a good decision and you rolled out a policy for the right reasons. So Lee, when it comes to these large technology investments that hospitals make, you hear a lot about ROI. Sometimes the, the ROI that nursing in particular, you know, the vast, the, the biggest part of the hospital enterprise um, is having to justify is a little bit less, a little bit less definable. How can a good analytics program help to uh, help that hospital understand, did I make a good investment and, and justify that they accomplished what they were trying to accomplish? Um, what are some ways you've seen the tools used for that? Any technology investments ROI should be linked to the goals of that organization in terms of patient care and keeping their doors open. Uh, there are a number of technology solutions that, while perhaps very effective, are also very expensive. An analytic solution that is well designed and expertly implemented will be affordable independent of that organization's budget. What do you mean when you say that? A well designed analytic solution will be affordable based on the needs of the organization. For example, if you're a teaching institution, you're going to be doing more with higher level analytics, more advanced techniques. So that's going to have a little higher budget needs. But a rural access facility simply needs to receive data from two or three systems, combine it, and then visualize it. That's a much lower budget item. So the objective is to partner with an analytics solution that can span the needs of those organizations with a similar platform. Are there, are there elements of that visual presentation layer that become key when you're going broader with that data to different, different people who maybe aren't data scientists or aren't IT professionals? There are two principles that we see more successful organizations employing. I will start with employing a data scientist can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. And if that data science, scientist is taking time collecting data and trying to structure it, they're not actually able to apply their expertise into understanding what the data is telling you. So an organization like ASO does that front end so that you're actually getting the value out of the expensive resource that's, that's, that's been engaged. The second principle is separating the visualization from the rest of the solution. For example, there are platforms that, that will do the combination 
and do a lot of the algorithms in the, in the same uh, repository as the visualization. Well, you can separate those two. And if you separate those two, you can actually use different visualization tools, which allows the organization to use what they're familiar with. That makes sense, makes total sense. What would be a meaningful improvement in the kind of things that clinical leaders, in particular CNOs, are looking for? And do you find more often that it's a combination of a bunch of small improvements over time that lead to a really big shift? Or is it, is it, does it tend more to be one giant improvement where you uncover something that has just a phenomenal huge impact? Small improvements lead to big improvements. It, we encourage people to use analytics to understand the, the organic nature of their, of their operations. It becomes a living, breathing organism because there are humans doing the work. And data should reflect that the question is, how, how, do, you, how do you show that? How do you visualize it? So we encourage, we, we encourage users to learn, what the, what, learn how the data works and what it's telling them, and then extract small improvements, which will lead to a big aha. And quite frankly, if, if, if you deploy an analytic solution to have a big aha, on the front end, something's probably off. So we find it to be very, very important to learn what the, learn how the data's working, learn what it's telling you, and then look for the small wins. And that will lead to sustained improvement and a much more positive experience with using analytics. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you. sitting down with you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.